Hi, and welcome to our talk, Kase Nen Satin, the collaborative creation of open access materials as a pedagogical practice and act of resistance. My name is Brooke Lillehaugen, and I'm one of 15 co-authors on this paper. Kase Nen Satin is a set of open educational resources on colonial Zapotec funded by an ACLS grant and created by this diverse team that includes activists, educators, academics, students, many Zapotec people and also non-native people like myself. And this talk will present this resource as a case study and we see it contributing to at least three themes uh, outside of this. The first being other communities working with historical corpora on their language. Secondly, the role digital scholarship can play in these types of projects. And finally, the role and potential power of linguistics in undergraduate education. The format of the talk will go as follows. First, Aaron Broadwell will get us started with some background on Zapotec languages and the corpus of colonial era Zapotec language texts. Then I'll talk a little more about digital humanities and Kaseid Nan Satin. Then we'll turn to the creation of these pedagogical materials as an act of resistance, followed by their role in pedagogy. And finally, Socha Flores Marcial will end with what's next. And throughout, you'll hear from many other participants in video contributions that were sent from Oaxaca and Oaxaca, California. So the Zapotec languages are spoken in Southern Mexico in the state of Oaxaca, which you see outlined on the map here. Zapotec is one of the largest languages of Oaxaca. As you can see on the map, it's spoken in Central and Eastern Oaxaca. One important thing to know is that Zapotec is actually a family of languages with perhaps 50 different varieties. Altogether, there are 400,000 to 450,000 speakers of all these different Zapotec varieties. All across the state, communities are shifting to Spanish in more and more context, and so all Zapotec varieties are endangered. Despite the fact that there are so many speakers in Oaxaca, Zapotec has no official uh, de facto status in the state. And although historically speakers of Zapotec wrote their language, that chain of literacy was broken. So in the current day, most speakers don't write their language, although that's changing. Discrimination against speakers of Zapotec and other indigenous languages has a long history and continues today. Here we see some text of the long tradition of Zapotec literacy. This is hieroglyphic writing, uh, alphabetic writing, began with the arrival of the Spanish Empire in Mexico. And the earliest document we have in written in Zapotec in alphabetic form is from 1565. The texts that were written during the colonial period include metalinguistic documents like uh, dictionaries and grammars, many religious texts, as well as various legal texts. And these documents are often stored in archives where the conditions can be extremely variable. Sometimes valuable colonial documents are just in piles uh, tied together. Even when they're well-preserved, they're often in locations that are difficult for speakers to access. And also the conditions of the archives often discourage indigenous people from visiting these archives. Our team is very concerned about considering how we can make this corpus of texts more accessible to people who would like to use it, especially the Zapotec community members. The anchor of this project is the Ticha webpage. Ticha is a digital text explorer for colonial Zapotec. On the website, you can interact with multiple levels of many of these texts, including high resolution images, metadata, and when available transcriptions, and even morphological analysis. We make the text publicly available on Teach as soon as we have permission to do so, even if all we have permission to do at that stage is to publish the images. Because the acknowledgement of the existence of these texts is important to the community and makes visible a written history that is often denied. We collaborate with septic individuals on their preferences and needs, which influences design decisions and our priorities. This corpus is utilized by septic individuals for a variety of purposes, as you'll hear later in the talk, including confirming and recovering words. Of course, accessibility is more than making a digital surrogate of a text available. In our case, we think this must include training and community, community engagement. And to that end, we sought and received funding from the ACLS to create an open access educational resource on Colonial Valley Zapotec, 
which is developed together with Zaftec partners as authors and co-editors and in collaboration with the broader Zaftec community. We had originally envisioned that broader collaboration happening through in-person workshops in California and Oaxaca, though of course that was not possible given COVID. So this shifted to online conversatorios that you'll hear a lot about later on. In these conversatorios, we workshopped a draft of each of the chapters, received comments and adapted the chapters based on the feedback and the additional contributions. So the resulting online open access resource is available now in English and Spanish, and it's developed with high school and undergraduate audiences in mind. And we hope that some of you listening might be inspired to use some of the chapters in some of your courses. And if you do, please give us feedback so we can continue to refine them. Sagoji, lazata, tiots, tios, and yoder was nayot, teno, naji, tinuwe and di, shachizash, tijen. I will be talking a little bit about the intentional resistance. But before I talk about the role of activism and developing the use of Cassette and Sun, I want to tell you a little bit about its content. You can see we have five chapters and then we'll be adding more in spring and summer of 2021. I was one of the facilitators at the Conversatorio in which we workshop chapters and one of the results was inspiration to reflect on the experience in a blog post entirely in Zapotec that you guys can see here. Also, uh, the Conversatorio helped me to do uh, this type of uh, language reclamation and uh, my experience facilitating and participating in the Conversatorio were both motivated and further fueled my language activism. So after the first cycle of conversatorio, I wrote this chapter, currently available, directed primarily at uh, other language activists, but also if you're not a language activist or you don't speak any indigenous language, I think that it will be very useful to you. So again, it's available. And I will be using this chapter next semester when I'll be teaching at the Universidad del Pueblo in Tlacolula in, in Oaxaca. And also we will be using this chapter in our next cycle of conversatorios that hopefully we'll do pretty soon. Um, and lastly, I want to just talk briefly about uh, how the conversatorio has helped me to recover some of the words that have been lost in my community. One area of enormous impact for me was using the colonial Zapotec language materi materials to recover find and confirm some words like 60 or 80. As a child, I used to listen these words from my grandmother, but as an adult, I wasn't really sure uh, if, if they were real, but uh, looking at the colonial documents, I was able to confirm them. As you guys can see here now, we have the subject word for 60, which is gayon and ta for 80. So creating a community among other Zapotec language activists is very personal, meaningful, as this work is sometimes very lonely and we had a chance to create a pan Zapotec activist network through this experience, not just in Oaxaca, but across the border, especially in California. And the conversation continues on Twitter, so you might wanna join us, uh, you can, uh, use Usa Tu Voz and Zapoteco Colonial hashtag. So I'm, next I'm going to be showing you video clips where you'll hear from other conversatorial participants about the impact of creating a community of language activism. And thank you again. Nala Edith Matias, La Chana Villa Diaz Ordaz Nernia Dichsa. Inin Sha. Charlav Mnit Los de Buch ne ne sak um ik anas ti ichna lo entre Iran ni ni kawe ndi ichke tega ke este puschisa um gaki lab Zak sil za te yuk tu narela Moises Garcia Guzman narena tu niet ni ronsan kun de dich zun ro ne wenia za kastup de niet guch la ja ni ronsan kun as a member of the Zapotec community that holds its own language, its own culture and traditions, its own land and laws, I seek to contribute not only how to make my community visible, 
but also engaging native speakers to participate and to learn more of the sources that exist in our language. Creating a bridge between native speakers with the digital space and a community of academics developing this valuable pedagogical material. The Conversatorio has been a space to learn and discuss different aspects of the colonial Zapotec and to reflect on how we speak or use the language nowadays. The participation of activists that speak different variants of Zapotec and academics has started a conversation of different realities and purposes, educating ourselves and create a new reality in how we perceive, learn, and share information of our language in our language. The forced transformation of our original in-person project that resulted from the 2020 pandemic created an opportunity that proved to be incredibly valuable in our intentional resistance to traditional academic models, specifically models in academia that are designed with a top-down approach where academics are highlighted and not necessarily the contributions of speakers or the community. The virtual conversatorios through Zoom for the summer of 2020 facilitated community building by expanding participation of several native speakers representing 16 different Zapotec communities from the valleys to the Sierras of Oaxaca. It was quite incredible to have this opportunity to connect Oaxaca, California, people like me who are currently uh, in California but are of Zapotec heritage and people in Oaxaca and of course, other people that connected uh, from other parts of the United States. Through this collaborative approach, we highlighted the Zapotec speakers and community members and credited them and their work and contributions. We actively visibilized and highlighted the intellectual power of the Zapotec indigenous community. We intentionally invited speakers from different spheres of existence, whether that is in the community, uh, students, students in Oaxaca, or in uh, California, academics such as myself or Felipe Lopez, Zapotecs in diaspora, and language activists as collaborators. And this presentation today is a testament of the value of such an approach. This mode of production of pedagogical materials was incredibly satisfying because we had input from different perspectives at the table. The opportunity to discuss Zapotec society, its history, language, and culture was enhanced through the participation of so many different voices in the Zapotec community. We were able to converse about our shared concerns and questions which ultimately served as a form of inspiration and empowerment. For me, knowing that these materials are available to anyone with an internet connection and that we had Spanish speaking audiences in mind while producing these materials inspires me greatly. I know, for example, that people in Oaxaca have already started using the materials that we are producing in Spanish. I do hope that moving forward, these materials will help inspire others working with endangered languages in academia or in the community at large, and that this serves as a seed of inspiration for people. Um, and we see the results of this work and how it has reached audiences in virtual spaces. Stiozu. The title of this collection, Kasayne and Satan, Learning Together, is very powerful to me because it reflects the intensely collaborative nature of this project. Each chapter has a single author, but we edited the volume as a whole during our weekly meetings so that every lesson benefited from the full expertise of the group. After the conversatorios, we then integrated feedback from the participants and new knowledge that they shared about their languages and their communities, which made these lessons more rich and more accessible. 
And within the conversatorios themselves, these new communities were formed where Zapotec activists were gathering and learning from each other, which meant that afterwards, many participants came away with new ways to share knowledge with their families, with their communities, and with the world at large. In the end, this project really redefined collaboration for me as not just an abstract ideal, but as an active process of learning together. And in the rest of this section, you're going to hear from some people about their experiences learning as part of this project and also how they are going to teach people in the future. Hello, my name is Colin K1 Hummer, a junior history major at Haverford College. And I'm Eloise Kadlasek, a junior linguistics major at Bryn Mawr College. As students working for TICHO, we were delighted to have the opportunity to participate in helping make Zapotec language and cultural content more visible for people both inside and outside Zapotec communities. The advice and knowledge of our advisory board members, Moises, Soshi, and Felipe, greatly contributed to our learning as undergraduate students. We participated in discussions about Zapotec and non-Zapotec audiences, uh, how to sensitively address the history of linguistic discrimination, towards Zapotec languages and ensuring that the lessons were accessible in spite of COVID. The feedback from conversatorio participants enabled the team to create more engaging exercises, clarify topics and ideas that were confusing and generate ideas for new lessons. During the summer, undergraduate intern interns worked together to draft answer keys by going through the lessons ourselves, parallel to the conversatorios. Like many participants, we really enjoyed learning things about the Zapotec number system. Both of us were able to reflect on the summer work in a blog series along with other teacher team members and Zapotec participants. In the fall, Eloise and I co-authored a lesson called Twitter and Zapotec Language Activism. Our goal was to introduce users to hashtags like Usa tu voz and Zapotec Colonial, which are digital spaces where Zapotec language activists share everyday life and their investigations into the long history and tradition of Zapotec writing. We invited participants to share their tweets as examples to highlight, several of whom are co-authors of this pr presentation. It was a lengthy but rewarding process to collaborate on creating a lesson for Casedine and Son. Like the work with the conversatorios, we met with the teacher team multiple times, going slowly through our drafts and revising as needed to make the lesson accessible while also making sure to avoid overstepping boundaries as non-Zapotec people. We are grateful to be not only allowed, but welcomed into this space and to work alongside so many incredible Zapotec language activists. Through the conversatorio, I have achieved more knowledge and more sources of information that I can share and can use to teach how Zapotec was studied and applied in the colonial period and contribute to eradicate the misinformation towards our language. This lesson inspired me to continue learning and practicing Zapotec in new ways, such as posting my daily life in Zapotec on social media, or teaching children who are part of the Zapotec community. And in this way, they could have an impact on the language, and social media can have an impact on other people who follow me and ask questions about the language. In another way, it also helps people who are part of this community and realizing that Zapotec is a language and not a dialect. I finally understood that when I was taking a Chicano class with Professor Solchil as his son, and in the end it made perfect sense as I got the opportunity to be part of the conservatorio. With this experience, I can share my knowledge with other people I live with and community I'm from. Finally, this is a poem I wrote in English originally, but after being part of the conversatorios, I decided to translate it in Spanish and Zapotec with the help of my mom. I hope to be able to continue writing these kind of poems to share with everyone through Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Now that I'm aware that there is a community of different small towns online, I'm also looking forward to continuing learning more about what each things mean to the town. Hopefully, I can start a YouTube channel where I upload videos of different topics to share with the online world of my beautiful town, language, and popular dishes, and much more that it has to offer. As we have seen in this presentation, interdisciplinary work is naturally a learning environment for everyone involved and can serve an explicit pedagogical role. We hope that these seeds that we have planted will inspire new generations to 
preserve and protect the languages, respect the speakers of those languages, and to continue speaking this language wherever they may be. Thank you. Tiliushi para la tuna laya Janet Molina kiche samla saten palula. Conocer más y difundir sobre mi experiencia y sobre mi lengua, mi idioma y dar a conocer lo que yo sé. Uh, de la misma manera, tengo en mente, en proyecto, continuar con este proyecto. Más adelante, primeramente, Dios que nos permita y ustedes por el apoyo, podamos crear esa gramática que tanta falta nos hace en Zapoteco. Yo sé que no es fácil, pero tampoco no es imposible, porque hay sonidos muy similares que nosotros, nuestro reto es poder entenderlo y poder escribirlo. Muy importante, ¿no? por eso te digo que era para para mí en realidad en realidad ni no ni en artículo pero tú y ni por te decir la inglés la para mí en escuela para 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 para